Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's uh, third and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather. For the next 10 to 14 days for today's final video, day 10 will take us to around the 18th of October. We'll be able to extend out beyond that. The extended GFS and ECM ensembles may return to complete. Have a look at the CFSB2 for November at the end of the video. I shall get on that for you in a second. Just to say that the first video is saying was our 7am uh, upload. We've also released Jeremy Friday as well, so please check out all today's videos. Thanks so much for doing that. could be live streaming after 10 o'clock tonight, so I should see you live uh, after 10. Uh, right, okay, let's crack on with this one. They're going to start off with the uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. The next couple of weeks, we're at Birmingham today. So, red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. We're starting off above average with the upper air temperatures at the moment. So, say pretty warm through the earlier part of the weekend, but then later in the weekend into early next week, the upper air temperatures will cool down. Uh, later on next week, we'll find the upper air temperatures beginning to lift back up again. That's still an, in association with high pressure. And then maybe a little bit of a drop coming along as we go towards the final week of October. Precipitation-wise, there's going to be lots of dry weather over the next week to 10 days. Plenty of dry and fine conditions. But we can see big precipitation spikes appearing, actually, from around 17th, 18th October onwards. It does look as though it's turning more unsettled then. And, uh, and, you know, it could be really quite wet, actually. There are some pretty, uh, pretty big pre precipitation spikes in there. But bear in mind, that is extended range and unreliable uh, within the GFS and its ensemble. So I'm not guaranteed that things will turn unsettled in, uh, in week two, you know, the second week of the forecast period. But certainly for the next week, two, ten days, it looks mainly dry. Uh, to be honest, temperature anomalies from the 8th to the 16th of October are going to be above average. Precipitation anomalies from the 8th to 16th of October are going to be drier than average. The latest wind flow map from earthnollschool.net shows that we're bringing in the winds from a southerly direction uh, today. So the weather remains pretty mild. High pressure is in control at the moment. This our the uh, UK Met Euro is looking for Monday. So by Monday, the high pressure just shifting a little bit to our west, allowing some slightly cooler air to move in uh, from the north and from the northwest. That carries on into Tuesday. And the high pressure starts to reach back in over top of the country. It's going to be a lot of dry weather as we go through the course of uh, next week. We'll perhaps bring some rain to Scotland around the middle part of next week. But otherwise, we're under high pressure will be mostly dry and fine. Low pressure over Scandinavia. That's going to bring some pretty cold air southwards uh, through Scandinavia. It could be the first snowfalls of the season across parts of uh, Scandinavia, I think, uh, next week. Uh, GFS Midnight Run. Again, high pressure over the site to the west of the country. Winds in from a northwesterly direction uh, over weekend and into the early part of next week. Still in that area of high pressure. It will turn cooler under the high, probably with some quite chilly nights and also risk of mist and fog patches. But the main story is that the high pressure goes on throughout the course of next week, bringing loads of dry weather. Towards the end of next week and the weekend of 16th, 17th of October, high pressure just begins to get eroded a little bit as lower pressure starts to come in from off the Atlantic. So by the time you get through today, 10, which is Monday, 18th of October, it does look as though low pressure is uh, breaking down the ridge and we're turning more unsettled then. Now, many to the extended range with the GFS Midnight Run, it does turn genuinely unsettled, low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, bringing bouts of rain uh, cooler and wetter as we go through that third week of October and towards the last week of the month. As far as we go today with the GFS output, is to the 24th of October, which of course is moving into the final week of, uh, of the month. So, uh, so yeah, big changes there for the third week of October with GFS. Big night run. Let's have a look at the six then. Uh, so, this is the very latest GFS run. High pressure again over slightly to the west of the country on Monday. Still there on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, that back riding over top of the country by Wednesday. We will bring in some cooler air though into that area of high pressure. Second half next week, dominated by high pressure, sitting over to the east of the country. And then moving up towards day 10, again, same idea, the ridge begins to slip over towards central and eastern Europe. Low pressure starting to come in from off the Atlantic. That's bringing wet weather as we get towards day 10 with a band of rain moving across the country. However, unlike the midnight GFS run, which then sets up a very unsettled spell of weather, the 6Z 
very quickly gets us back to high pressure again. So after a little interruption uh, with some wet weather around day 9 and 10, uh, we're very quickly back under high pressure once more. And in the extended range, it's really high pressure all the way. And of course, if this came off, we would be looking at a notably dry uh, October, I think, by this point. As far as we get to, I say with the GFSA, it's to be 24th of October. We're back under a 1,030 millibar area of high pressure. Very different to what the midnight GFS run uh, was showing. But given the, um, you know, given how much high pressure we've had through this uh, autumn so far, you would not rule that out as a possibility. But even into the second half of the month, after a little interruption, some wetter weather around uh, sort of 17th, 18th of the month, um, but high pressure comes back strongly uh, again. You certainly wouldn't rule out that as a possibility given how much high pressure we've had through this autumn so far. Uh, GEM looks like that. So, uh, once more, on uh, Monday, the high pressure is over to West Country, and we're bringing in winds from a northwesterly direction. We'll be uh, a little bit cooler with that area of high pressure through the early part next week, but also with quite a bit of dry weather, some showers perhaps in the east. The high pressure... Dominates weather in the south into the second half of next week. When bridges back north again, notice this troughing over Scandinavia. That's pulling in cold air from the north across parts of Scandinavia. Moving up towards day 10, uh, we look like that. So gradually the ridges are eroding and breaking down. Low pressure is starting to come in off the Atlantic, but not with a huge amount of conviction, to be honest. And, you know, you wouldn't rule out the chance that that could go back towards higher pressure, actually, after day 10. And then the ECM uh, looks like this. So, again, high pressure to West Country winds in from a northwesterly direction on Monday, turning northerly on Tuesday. Then the high pressure comes back in, but within a cooler air mass through the middle part of next week. Second half of next week, we find a deepening area of low pressure in the Norwegian Sea, bringing some cloud and rain to Scotland, otherwise, England and Wales under that ridge. Um, and whichever it goes all that far away, by the time we get through to day 10, it is slipping south, was low pressure perhaps starting to move in from off the Atlantic at that point. So uh, a mix of options there. Don't look as though we will get some sort of unsettled weather around sort of 16th to 18th of October. But how much, you know, how unsettled it gets, how much rain we get from that and how quickly uh, or how long that lasts and whether we quickly get back to high pressure, all of that remains to be seen. Uh, this is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tometrio.com. Plenty of rain in the north and west at the moment, but uh, high pressure is sort of in control of the weather. So the emphasis is on dry weather through the course of next week. Um, what rain does come into the northwest as it moves south, south and eastwards across the country, um, you know, sort of fizzles out through the course of next week. So many southern and south east areas will have a completely dry week next week, actually. And moving up towards day 10, then there is a definitive change to unsettled weather, wet weather into the northwest, still struggling to get much in the way of rain into that far southeastern corner, I have to say. That's how we look as we get to day 10. Still some showery bursts left in the north and the west. But again, very little rain gets into the southeast over the next 10 days. These are the options on the table from the ECL Ensemble today for day 10, uh, which gets us to the 18th of October from the Icelandic Met Office. Um, so 19 members of the ECM Ensembles have high pressure sort of ridging into the south, lower pressures away to the northwest, trying to break down the ridge, but still the high pressure keeping particularly southern and south east areas mainly dry up to day 10. That does include the operational run. 10 with a very strong area of high pressure right over top of the coach. So obviously there's not going to be much in the way of rain with that. 9 have high pressure over Scandinavia. We've got a Scandinavian high and bringing winds from the east. That could be, that's going to remain dry, but it could be quite cool. Um, eight with high pressure again over and to the east, northeast country. That's bringing winds from the east once more. And then five with low pressure to the north and also to the west, but high pressure ridging up from the southwest. That's probably the driest and, and warmest option. That's probably the warmest option. Um, but most of the options there seem to involve higher pressure around day 10 to be honest. So uh, so it's not guaranteed that we're going to break down this ridge within the next 10 days. However, we're missing two weeks' time. These are the options that we've got. It will get us to the 23rd of October. We have 34 members of the ECM on so was looking really unsettled. Low pressure then in off the Atlantic. The high pressure's gone. And, uh, and, you know, that is properly unsettled wet and windy weather. And 17 also bringing in low pressure, but slightly differing 
in the placement of the ridge. So all options were going to settled by two weeks out, but uh, in 10 days' time, we could still be under quite a bit of high pressure. The last thing we'll look at is the CFS. This is the very latest CFS V2 700 millibar height only forecast for November. Going for a mid-Atlantic ridge uh, extending down towards Spain with a trough of below average heights, low pressure to our north and also to our northeast of Scandinavia. This will probably send a jet stream on a northwest southeast alignment. And uh, so that's probably still reasonably dry in the south, actually, but more unsettled in the north. And will be a little bit cooler as well with those winds coming in from uh, the northwest. There's a little bit of cold snap potential. With that, I would have thought the temperature anomaly is close to or slightly above average. The precipitation anomaly shows no particular signal. I recommend there's a little bit of cold snap potential uh, with that uh, 700 millibar height anomaly if we do send the wind flow uh, and jet stream on the northwest to southeast alignment. And particularly so across Scandinavia, actually, where you expect some, some quite big northerly Arctic plunges at times. Uh, but it's all a long way off, and uh, of course, we should wait and see what happens there. Right, that's it for the video then. So if you enjoyed uh, this video and all of today's videos, then please can you use the special like button on them. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that. You'll, you'll be able to see future weather content if you do that, including uh, future winter updates, future Christmas updates, and also uh, future live streams. Tell your friends to subscribe as well. They can uh, watch all of that content with you. And you can have a chat about it with your friends and family and whatnot. And uh, don't forget to drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Right, that's it then uh, for today's uh, output. Uh, except for the live stream coming up after 10 p.m. But that's it for today's videos anyway. Um, so uh, over weekend, I'll tell you what's coming up tomorrow. We've got a 7 a.m. forecast. We'll have the ECM doing our 42 day forecast, uh, weekend forecast, and 10 to 14 day. Uh, and on Sunday, we'll begin with 7 a.m. forecast. We'll have part one of the SIP winter 2021-2022 update. Part two will be released on Monday, of course. And we'll be live streaming on Sunday evening at 6 p.m. So, uh, so yeah, plenty coming up over the next day or two. Keep checking back to the channel for all of the videos of live streams and whatnot. And uh, for this one, though, that's all for now. And thanks for watching. I'll see you after 10. Bye for now.